Hi everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the Sidereal Vedic Astrology Outlook for the month of January, January 2023. We're beginning a brand new year. It's off to an interesting start with Mercury being in retrograde. I will cover that for every single mini sign in this time's report. As for the overview for all of 2023, now I might do a video about this. I'm not sure at this stage because I'm actually really busy at the moment. I've got quite a lot of bookings and I've got lots of things going on. I will aim to do a video for 2023, but you're very welcome to join my newsletter and I do a quarterly newsletter and every quarter I do predictions for the upcoming quarter. And what I tend to do is when we start the new year, that's where I do my yearly prediction. So you can definitely come onto my website, sign up for the newsletter, and you will be able to see your outlook for the year ahead. So that information will definitely be available. You will be able to get your outlook for the year, but it's just via my newsletter. And if I do, a 2023 overview video it'll be based on the information there but I might not do it might be a little bit more cut down it might be a bit more brief uh, when I write those newsletters I tend to have the space to just really go for it and write quite a bit so you'll definitely want to catch up with the newsletter uh, this time in this episode we're going to take a look at the news in brief I do want to cover one item of news just briefly and that will be the Ukraine war so anyone who wants to know a bit more about that situation I've got some things to share there uh, then I'll be covering the energy for January we'll take a look at a high level for the collective what the energy is going to be like across January and then I will dive straight into the mini reports so why don't we begin with a bit of a news matchup um, one of you had asked, I think this was a couple of videos ago, you said, would you please talk about the situation in the Ukraine? And I, I've kind of been avoiding it actually because I don't know too much what's going on. I haven't been watching mainstream news. The most news I get is via my iPhone. There's a side panel and I read the headlines. And a few days ago, I read a headline about a strike or something in the Ukraine so, something like that had come up on the headlines on my phone and that was pretty concerning um, when I got the question from the commentator who said please would you cover the Ukraine I think I wrote back to you and I said that I'm not really watching any news and um, you know I it breaks my heart that there's war going on in the world and um, my heart goes out to you and of course any you know anybody who's in a difficult place and you know and I don't understand or know the politics of what's going on there I haven't studied what's going on but when I saw that headline about the strike that had happened recently I think I also mentioned to the commentator in my reply that I, at that time I did read some kind of article on my phone that said in March things should improve in March and that made sense to me when I saw the news article that said in March things should improve because I know astrologically that's when Mars leaves Taurus. And what I've observed of the Ukraine situation is that there is a real connection between Mars and Venus. So when things began in the Ukraine, I believe I've got the dates here, 24th Feb to 7th April, and I have written on my screen, this was when Venus and Mars were walking the night skies together. They were very closely conjunct. And I think at the time I ran a video called Planetary War, something like that, because they were technically in planetary war. You know, sometimes Mars was winning, sometimes Venus was winning. It was like this. They were tightly within a degree of each other for quite a long time. And it was at that time when the war in the Ukraine really flared up and things were happening, right? So I observed that, okay, it's a close connection between Mars and Venus. Then 
When I read the news article where someone had made a prediction, I think it was a political analyst or something like that, they said that March, you know, things should get a lot better. That made sense because Mars is going to leave uh, Taurus around 13th, 14th of March. So that's ideal because then, you know, we've got Mars getting out of Venus's sign. Recently, on my phone, on the side thing where the news headlines come, there was a headline about a strike or something like that. It seemed very serious. I didn't click on the article, but I hopped onto my astrological system and I thought, right, there must be some kind of Mars-Venus thing going on. And sure enough, Mars is casting uh, an aspect onto Venus at the moment. And this is going to be intense. I've got the dates here. It's kind of intense now. I'm recording this today on the 19th of December. So I've got the dates here, 17th, 18th, 19th, 20th, 21st, being the worst uh, of the, the days of this tight Mars, Venus sort of aspecting thing that's going on there. So what I'm seeing, and I think there's going to be some relief come to that region from say even as soon as like the 30th of December onwards because Venus is moving forward and she kind of flies out of that aspect orb. She, she won't be sticking around there. So things should start to improve. I think there should be some relief 30th December onwards. But then I kept clicking up because I wanted to see, all right, when are these two going to be together again? And what I saw is that Mars and Venus are going to be close together again, June 2023 and July 2023. They're going to be quite close. Not only that, but uh, Mars is going to be opposite Saturn as well. And so what I'm seeing is that I think there's going to be some relief. So there's going to be periods of relief. So I think like 30th December onwards, there should be some relief. Then again, when Mars leaves Taurus, so that spring of next year, there should be some relief or some change, some energy shift should be happening. But then I do feel like there's a flare up again. And the flare up is really June 2023 and July 2023 is when things could be quite intense. And but then I'm seeing that Venus will retrograde. She and she starts to retrograde 23rd July onwards. So I think things could end as in no more problems there in that region is what I'm hoping. I mean, I'm hoping and praying that all war stops today. Like the, no problems. You know, I don't want any of this. Uh, but yeah, I'm seeing that kind of 23rd July onwards. I, I mean, that's kind of where I'm seeing like a total end to things. So it could be 23rd July onwards, or it could be 8th of August onwards when Venus actually steps into Cancer. But she starts retrograding from the 23rd of July onwards. And it's quite interesting because it feels like there could be some kind of crescendo of energy. So June, things are getting tense. Then July, and I'm just going to have a look at this in my system while I'm talking about it now. Oh, hang on a minute. I've gone too far. What are we looking at? June, July. Because I saw Mars is opposite Saturn and that's going to be intense. That's kind of, let's have a look here, Mars Saturn opposition is, and I've written the date here somewhere, Mars Saturn opposition. I've got here 21st July, let's have a look at that. 21st July looks pretty tense. So it kind of feels like there's, there's June, July things could be tense in that region and then like 21st things could be, there could be some I don't know, maybe some big tension or something like this. But then I see 23rd onwards, it, it, um, it should end. I, I'm thinking in 8th August onwards, things should end. That's what I was seeing. So I decided to Google search, when will the Ukraine war end? Because I thought, well, maybe some political commentators, just as I'd seen in an article before, they had said springtime, it should end. And it was so interesting on the Google results page, I didn't click on any of the articles, but I read all of the um, kind of little snapshots. And I saw some commentators were saying, oh, spring, it should end. But I saw some commentators saying summer, summer of next year, the war should end is what I saw. So 
believe me, I'm praying that it ends now, today, tomorrow, every day. I don't, I don't want this to continue. Uh, but I just thought I would give an update as to what I'm seeing astrologically. And yeah, I'm not, I'm not too familiar with um, the situation or what's going on there. As I say, I, I don't, I, yeah, I don't, like I haven't even been keeping up with the news kind of thing. So um, I'm very unfamiliar with what's going on, but I feel like, you know, we can, we can see astrologically what's happening here. And it's, it's just worth putting this, uh, I, guess, I guess you could call it a prediction or this idea out there. Because um, so, this information about Mars and Venus, because we have seen those two planets in particular being key players in this situation. So I feel like through astrology, we can see an end and it's coming. So that's good. I'm just happy that there's going to be an end to this. And uh, yeah, my viewer, I think there are a few of you out there in that part of the world. My heart goes out to you. My heart goes out to anyone who's in a tough part of the world. At the moment, there are so many problems. There are so many problems of people trying to pay bills. Mortgages have gone up in England. That's, you know, across the board, everybody is uh, dealing with some extraordinary hard hardship. And I think... Thing, this is going to be a tough winter, but then I will take a look at the astrology for next year. I, I think there will be some good aspects and things to look forward to as well. And I'll certainly draw those out in my content. I'm always wanting to be positive and, and show that, you know, we've got good things to look out for as well. So, yeah, I, there is, uh, you know, some tough stuff that we still have to get through, but... The great thing about astrology is that you can always see an end. You can always see that a cycle is going to close. Something's going to finish. A Mahadasha will end. You know, and sometimes we're dealing with a few years. Sometimes we're dealing with 20 years, you know, and some of these things are, are difficult. So if you're going through anything that is difficult, hang in there. Know that things do change. Things will change, you know, and... Well, the thing that helps me, the thing that I keep going back to is meditation. I have started my meditation practice again. I think last week on the pick a card, I said, I haven't really been meditating. I was, I was doing like sort of 10 minutes per day, which is not proper. So I'm back to my 20 now. And, and I do, I, I head back to meditation. I head back to stillness, silence, just pure peace. And it's much needed. Uh, on the planet at the moment and definitely across this winter so if anyone feels inspired to learn meditation I've got I'll put it on the screen I've got a, a code it's called om free om free you can type that into my website you can download my meditation tutorial and you can watch that you can see the way that I practice I typically get a journal of some kind you know kind of like this and I'll just write out all my feelings just write put all the rubbish on paper I scribble it out and then I sit and meditate and it's, it's lovely. So try that. Uh, if at any time, you know, it all just gets too much. I'm going to go through the energy of this month, January. We do have a Mercury retrograde and I will be talking about this when I get to those parts of the notes. Where I'll talk about a higher power and handing things over to a higher power. So, so stick with me if, if you are looking for a remedy. Uh, for the month of January but why don't we get into the month of January I'll just take a look at yeah we're okay for time energy for January all right so what have we got going on well we're going to have Saturn move into Aquarius now if you missed my Saturn in Aquarius video I'll link it above you can take a look at that video I have covered for every single sign just a light touch introduction as to how this energy will impact you over the course of about, it's about 2.5 years. Um, some of you are feeling it now and I'm in full agreement. I'm feeling it now too. I, you know, it's, it's been interesting for me. Last two, three years have been on the quieter side for me. And uh, just within the last, I don't know, maybe a week or so, like a lot of bookings have come in. Thank you to everyone who's booked. And um, I can feel things are getting busy. So I'm really excited about that. And that's, that's a good thing. 
because yeah, my bills in England have gone up and I'm definitely, you know, just hoping that I'll be able to take care of all those, but we'll get, we'll get to that when we talk about this Mercury retrograde. Um, I just wanted to t touch, uh, check in there about Saturn in Aquarius and just to say that, yes, some of you are feeling that right now. You're feeling the shift already. It's, it's a period of 2.5 years. So, and let's say the future has already happened. We, we can, you know, kind of go there here in astrology. So let's just say it's already happened. You'll be feeling the weight of that 2.5 years now, <laughs> right? Some very sensitive people will be feeling it now. So, yeah, uh, that's, that's a thing. All right, so, um, and I love to contemplate that stuff that, you know, has like that the future has already happened now and all this kind of thing. Yeah, I know. It's, um, anyway, another video for another time. Now, Venus will transit through Capricorn. So, this is not the greatest energy for love life uh you know it, it's i've got the note here she's in a business-like mood she's not in a romantic mood um, but you will notice 23rd of january onwards venus will head into aquarius should be a lot more social and you know willing to socialize meet people have fun uh go out should be a lot more venus will be in a more loving mood 23rd january onwards but in the mini reports, I'll cover that for each sign uh, a little bit in more detail, how that affects you personally. Because for some of you, love will be great and some of you, love may not be so good. Uh, but we've also got Sun going to be transiting through Capricorn. Okay, Sun in Capricorn is going to be really good for career. Oh, that's brilliant, right? Sun in Capricorn, one of my favorite positions there. Um, Sun in Capricorn is great for career. So anyone who's eager to get going on their projects and things like that, you know, this, this should be a good start to the year from definitely from the sun's point of view. Now, Mars will go forward on the 13th of January. This is great. Mars will be covering a little bit of old ground, ground that he's already traversed due to the retrograde. So you might find that you're able to do things a bit quicker. Um, and yeah because there's going to be some old ground that's being covered so you might you might feel things are easier quicker faster observe that if if you do feel that that would be due to mars now some people might feel that things are slower okay this is interesting how so mercury retrograde in sagittarius this is an interesting one sometimes i observe that when mercury is in retrograde because mercury is a very fast planet we get our speed from mercury right our quick wittedness and you know um, skill and speed and you know tennis players will have a great mars and uh, mercury sorry and things like that well they might have a good mars as well but i know mercury precision speed skill mercury so when it's in retrograde you might notice that there can be frustrations things aren't as fast things aren't as quick that is one of the ways of looking at it uh here in sidereal vedic astrology we've got mercury retrograde in sagittarius i'll put the dates on the screen by my side so you'll be able to see what the dates are i'm pretty sure 19th january he moves forward and that is sydney australia time uh, i've got my astrologer's software set to sydney australia so it could be 18th where you are so just know with my dates it could be a day out but What's the significance of Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius? All right, well, here's where earlier when I touched on the remedy of working with a higher power, this was what I came to, interestingly, when I was contemplating Mercury's retrograde in Sagittarius. I sat with the chart today and I was contemplating, all right, what does this mean? And I was kind of really trying to zone in and nothing was coming at first. And it was quite interesting because Mercury is very logical and concentration and we all know the usual mercury retrograde things they say it's all the re words so rewind um, repeat you know uh, review this is do it again there could be confusion there could be um, and it's mercury right so this is communication so we could have problems with communication 
or things just don't happen perfectly the first time. There's all these connotations. But here Mercury's retrograding in Sagittarius. And the Lord of Sagittarius is Jupiter in Pisces. And this, what came into my head as I was looking at all this was a concept. It's actually a remedy. And this is a remedy that Abraham Hicks talked about on one of their videos, where Esther Hicks says what she does is she will write two lists on a piece of paper. So she'll write her to-do list. This is what I need to do. And then she'll actually write a to-do list for the universe. And she'll say, this is what the universe needs to do. And she's actively acknowledging what's out of my control. And what do I need the higher power to do? And I thought this is brilliant for this Mercury retrograde during this time. If you feel that it's a bit of a sluggish start to the year for you, which for some people it will be. I've been chatting with some of you, um, doing client work and on the emails and in conversations I've had with people. What I'm discovering is some people are demotivated, they're feeling flat, they're not having the best start to the year. We've got this shift of energy, Saturn is shifting in a significant way. So, and some people like me, I'm feeling an improved energy, thank goodness, because I've had the most kind of like uh, low energy <laughs> three years. It's been interesting for me, right? So now I'm starting to feel a little bit of energy. It's like, wow. So some of us will be starting to feel a little bit of energy and it's like we're getting something new here. Some people might be, it's, you know, something else, right? You're not, you, it's it's going to take a bit more time. So it's a really good time to sit with this Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius and actually actively think about, okay, what do I need to do? What, would, what are the to-do list things I need to do? And you kind of review the last year because it's a reword, rewind, review, repeat. We write, we have a look at the last year. We think, what do we want to do this year? We're heading into the new year. You can write a list of what you want to do but equally write a list of what you want the universe to do. And as I was explaining earlier, you know, my bills in England have gone up and yeah, it's a worry, you know, it's like, gosh, you know, and I do think about these things, but equally I very much watch all of my spiritual stuff and my good positive stuff. And I just keep in a positive mind, mind frame. This is why I don't watch much news. So I'll put a link below to um, Joseph Murphy. There's a brilliant, uh, thing I've been listening to I'll share that with you guys and I'm actually I'm definitely going to do this task of my to-do list and the universe's to-do list because I need the universe to do some things for me I need it to you know um, bring clients my way bring viewers and, and do all of that kind of thing right so you know I'm going to write some of those things down and I'm going to take this Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius time as an opportunity i've got the note here it could be a time to hand things over to god if you don't believe in god that's fine to a higher power because we all must acknowledge that it's not just it's not just the small ego me that makes my life happen no it's not it's you know my friends and family as well and my community and my higher self or that that something or other on the other side that has saved me so many times, you know, when I look back and I think of things that I've been helped by some other thing that's not me, right? We've all got that and we all need to acknowledge it a bit more. And I think, you know, we've got Mercury retrograde in Sagittarius where it's Sagittarius, Sagittarius where the, you know, that, that's where we have the concept of God. And then, but then, the Lord of Sagittarius is seated happily there in Pisces, where we get the experience and the feeling of God. Okay, so that's another thing that occurred to me as I was contemplating all this today. That, you know, in Sagittarius we have the man-made concept of God. We've got the Bible and the books and the, our ideas about it there in the ninth house. And we've got the teachers who teach it and all that kind of thing in the ninth. But in the twelfth we have the experience of God, right? So Mercury's retrograde in Sagittarius there, I think this is a very, and Mercury is practical, logical, 
you know so it's it's quite interesting and I was just thinking that's a very practical and logical exercise to do a to-do list Mercury loves that stuff and you can write one for you write one for the universe you know and I'll put a link below as I, as I mentioned to that Joseph Murphy thing that I've been listening to every day so instead of watching news every day I have been tuning into this guy and just letting him kind of reprogram my beliefs and just kind of telling myself hey of course I'll manage I've always managed and it'll all be all right and all that kind of thing so we just got to keep on keeping on and believe that it's all going to work out so you know we can do it it's all that stuff all right well I think we are good to get started on the mini readings those of you who would like to uh, watch the whole thing as some of you do you are very welcome to join on the journey we are going to begin with Aries 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 welcome thank you so much for joining so this is Aries ascendant Aries moon Aries sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so Aries what do we have going on well on the 6th or the 7th of January depending on where you are there will be a beautiful full moon happening in Gemini Purnavasu nakshatra and that's going to be in your third house so we've got that retrograde mercury there with the sun and that's in the ninth so if you missed my introduction don't worry because I'm going to catch you up right here I've got the note here this is a great time to review your relationship with higher power whatever you consider that to be so is that God is that the universe whatever that is this is a great time to review that relationship with higher power and we've got a full moon here so if you want to express the fullness of your feelings to that higher power you can and if you want to share with the universe hey my life is tough right now you know you can try that exercise that I mentioned in the intro which is you can write a to-do list for you and you can write a to-do list for the universe and you can say and actually write down what it is that you'd like the universe to do to help you out so because there are lots of things that are out of our control and you know I do believe that communication is a two-way thing right we've got communication here this full moon is happening in your third house you can communicate directly with the higher power and state the areas in your life where you need some help right now now on the 15th of January onwards we've got the sun moving into your 10th house so you are going to be shining at work for a good couple of months this is great energy for work if you are looking for work this is a really good time to find work potentially because your you know career house there is, is going to be lit and it's going to move into the 11th the 11th of course is gains opportunities networking expanding your network all of that so this is a great time for that kind of thing now mercury is going to be retrograde in your ninth house so this is going to be a really good time to review any plans you have regarding travel perhaps you know this is the year for you to travel or you you might want to travel um, that kind of thing this is a good time to review any plans you have around that uh, it's also a good time to review your skills so these are your skills that you use and this could be to do with hobbies it could be to do with your work but if there's some area in your life where you need to skill up this could be a good time for you to do that while this mercury retrograde is on mercury will go forward on the 19th of january okay uh, and on the 23rd of january onwards this is a good time for your love life Venus will move into the 11th on the 23rd of January up until that point Venus is a little bit business-like so you know not the best time for love uh, now on the 21st or the 22nd of January there's a new moon in Capricorn Uttara Ashada Nakshatra happening in your 10th house so we've got a beautiful new moon here on the 21st 22nd of Jan great time to wish for something regarding your career and this is something that's regarding just you not to do with your company or your team or somebody else this is something you want to wish for personally and that's just to do with you and this could be to do with your career this could be to do with where you really want to see yourself 
what is that? Is that changing? You know, this is a good time to recognize that. Aries, it is looking like a pretty good month for you. I'm loving the energy of sun in your 10th. I think that's fantastic for career. And of course, love life is going to improve massively uh, when Venus moves into the 11th on the 23rd Jan onwards. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Taurus Ascendant, Taurus Moon, or Taurus Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So now, what do we have for you, Taurus? Well, on the 6th or 7th of January, we've got a full moon in Gemini, Punarvasu Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your second house. So you might feel at this time around the 6th or 7th of Jan, you want to express the fullness of your feelings to a family member, okay? And I would say this is a good time to do that. You've got a full moon here, so you possibly have a lot to say, but take extra care because Mercury is retrograde on that line, all right? So definitely there might be some pressing need to speak to a family member, but think about it a bit beforehand, all right? Just, just go slow, take your time. Uh, on the 15th of January onwards, we've got sun in your ninth house. You are getting ready to shine at work. So that shine time is coming up. Uh, it's not quite there yet. Sun in the ninth, you might even have, it could be good for authority. You might be getting on with authority figures or your guru or something like that. There could be some clashes here as well, but you're basically getting ready to shine at work and that time is really going to come for you 13th 14th feb onwards for a good couple of months you're going to have shine time where all eyes are going to be on you or you'll be succeeding or people will really listen to you take on board your ideas so that's going to be a good time 13th 14th feb onwards um, but the moment you're getting ready okay now mercury is in retrograde in your eighth house he is getting you to review your finances your shared assets your savings. Okay, it's a great time to plan your finances for the whole year if you can, right? Think definitely, yeah, with Mercury retrograde where he is there in the eighth, think finance, think planning. What do you want to achieve or do or how do you want to organize things better? Great time to be thinking about that. Now Mercury goes forward on the 19th of January. Okay, so you've got about, you know, a good chunk of the month. To, for that kind of activity. You can also try that to-do list activity that I mentioned in the intro if you watch that. Uh, your love life should be good through to about 23rd Jan, all right? And then Venus will step into the 10th, where she's a bit more business-like, okay? So uh, that's nice energy for your work. So work is, is definitely good across, you know, Feb-type time, but your love life is still in good shape until 23rd Jan, so that's good. Now, 21st, 22nd of January, we've got a new moon happening in Capricorn, Uttara Ashada Nakshatra. This is happening in your ninth house. So it's a new moon, right? You can wish for something at this point in time. So this is a 21st, 22nd Jan. You could wish for more leadership capability of your own life. Perhaps you want to take charge of your own life. And actually, I'm feeling so inspired, Taurus. I'm going to share with you. A link to um, gosh it's this channel called hiker girl but I'll share with you the video by Luke Corn. Luke Corn is it Luke Corn something I don't know I'll find out and I'll put it on the screen and I'll share share that with you definitely check her out this is a young lady who has taken her power back so if you're looking for an example of what that means definitely watch this video I found her so inspirational absolutely incredible person all right now we are going to welcome gemini gemini welcome thank you so much for joining so this is gemini sorry i just saw a little fruit fly my apologies <laughs> might be a gemini might that little fly might be born in gemini don't worry i've got a spider that lives in that corner he'll sort it out this is my my best friend spider who's lived has been there for about i don't know how many months maybe a year i'm gonna miss that spider when i go anyway Gemini, it's a Gemini ascendant, Gemini moon, Gemini sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. What have we got going on, Gemini? Well, we have got a full moon happening in Gemini, Purnavasu Nakshatra, on the 6th or 7th of January, depending on where you are. 
and for you it's happening in your first house so this is your full moon this is your time Gemini uh, this is a good time 6th or 7th Jan to really carve out a little bit of me time and reflect on the whole year that you've been through and if you can really reflect on what have I learned you know what have been the learnings what went right what didn't go right and of course when we see what didn't go right there's usually a learning there's usually a lesson in there so reflect on that if you can uh, and as well around the 6th or 7th of January if you're married in a partnership any of that definitely take care of how you speak with your partner Mercury is in retrograde at that time and sometimes our communication is not always the best or the sharpest when Mercury is in retrograde now 15 January onwards we've got Sun in the eighth house so you might get some more visibility on issues that have been hidden from you uh, you know hidden agendas around you secrets things that you would like to know more about but you just don't have any visibility on that well you might get some visibility here with Sun in the eighth so something might become clear to you you might learn something new uh, a secret could be uncovered as a Mercury retrograde which is happening in your seventh house so this is a good time to review uh, how things are going in your partnership this could be marriage this could be business partner or your business if you're self-employed as well and Mercury is going to go forward on 19th January so 19th January onwards I mean I think we all really want to be moving forward getting on with things you know if we've got a, it's nice that we've got this kind of early part of the year to reflect rewind you know um, so don't worry if you feel like it's the first of January and I'm demotivated you're kind of on track okay so don't, don't worry about that because it's really 19th January onwards we really want to be getting on with it I've got the note here love life uh, looks good uh, for the whole month yeah Venus is in the eighth that's great and it's going to continue to be good for a little while so that's you know after this month it's going to be good for a little while longer then you'll have a little period where it's not so good then it'll be great for a long time now 21st 22nd Jan there's a new moon in Capricorn Uttara Ashada Nakshatra this is happening in your eighth house so this is a new moon where you can wish for just perhaps some improvement in your relationship if you feel like you too close to your partner or you're a bit enmeshed or a bit codependent or uh, we're in each other's faces all the time and you know you can wish for a bit of healthy independence here and that can happen across the Christmas period you know just too much family stuff um, so if you're feeling any of that then 21st 22nd January uh, it's a good time to wish for kind of just healthier relationships a bit more me time if that's what you need but Gemini it's looking pretty good all up we are now going to welcome Cancer Cancer welcome thank you so much for joining this is Cancer Ascendant Cancer Moon Cancer Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology so what do we have Cancer well on the 6th or 7th of January there is a full moon happening in Gemini Purnavasu Nakshatra this is happening for you in your 12th house so you might gain some deep spiritual insights at this time we've got that big bright beautiful full moonlight shining here on, from your 12th house right so some deep spiritual insight may have, might occur to you at this time you might get downloads you might get ideas uh, you might you know have some creativity come through as well it's great for meditation um, so this is beautiful energy right here so definitely if you're an artist a creative any of that you or you keep a dream journal good idea to keep a dream journal uh, if you can I must admit I need to do that because sometimes I remember my dreams for a while but then yeah I need to write them down so that's one thing I should do too uh, let's have a look here but yeah great for meditation around the 6th 7th Jan 15th January onwards we've got also you might find that you don't sleep as much okay so that could be a possibility as well you might find it hard to sleep 6th or 7th of Jan if that's the case that's fine um, you know it's always yeah that ha happens with me on a full moon uh, 15 January onwards okay Sun in the seventh house 
So you might be more empathetic at this time. Equally, you might feel that things are lacking in your relationship or that you want more focus on you or the sun being in the seventh house might help you identify where relationships are out of balance as well. You might be able to see quite clearly, oh, hang on a minute, I give and give and give, but I don't get anything in, in return. What is this, right? So that might become quite clear to you 15th January onwards. Uh, Mercury retrogrades in your sixth house. Now this is going to get you to ideally review your career, any career goals that you have um, or any legal matters that you're involved in. This could be a time where you are reviewing that or hopefully you get extra time to strategize or make your plans or, or whatever that is. Uh, but yeah, legal matters could be in focus at this time. Also debt could be in focus at this time. Mercury's retrograding, so you might get an opportunity to strategize how you want to tackle your debt and what plans you want to put in place this year. Now your love life is going to improve from the 23rd of January onwards. Venus is going to step into the 8th house. That's good, Cancer. I'm happy for that because I think over the last couple of months before the 23rd of Jan, I could imagine that love life might have been difficult. Okay, so if that's been the case, know that think your love life is going to improve 23rd Jan onwards. Now on the 21st or 22nd of January, there's a new moon in Capricorn, Uttara Ashada Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your seventh house. So you've got a new moon here uh, in your seventh house. This is beautiful. So you could wish for something new in your relationship. And because it's Uttara Ashada Nakshatra, Uttara Ashada Nakshatra is the lonely nakshatra. This is all about you. So wish for the ability to be your full self in your relationships and that you'll attract relationships going forward where you can be more you, you know, where you don't have to sort of, I don't know, be limited or crimped and cramped to please someone else. No, no, you want to be able to be you. If you're a bit silly, sometimes you want to be able to do that, right? So. Uh, wish for that, wish for relationships where you can be your full wacky self, whatever that is, um, you know, that kind of thing. So that, that would be good on the 21st or the 22nd of January. Well, that is what I have for you, Cancer. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, this is Leo Ascendant, Leo Moon or Leo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Just taking the time. We're all good. All right, Leo, what have we got going on? Well, on the 6th or 7th of January, we have a full moon in Gemini Purnavasu Nakshatra, and this is happening in your 11th house. So you might gain some insight here into relationships with your older siblings, or something might culminate in your relationship with your older siblings. It could be to do with your friends as well, it could be to do with your professional network circle, as well. Something might culminate, something might complete in those areas. Um, it is a good time to talk if you feel like you have something to say or you want to express the fullness of your emotion with someone close to you at this time. Definitely a good time to talk but take care because Mercury is retrograde on this line with, with, the, with the planets there. So just take extra care. Um, think about what you, what you want to say kind of thing. In advance. Now on the 15th of January onwards we have got Sun in the sixth house. This is great energy for your health, your vitality, for work, for winning. Okay if you've got a legal case or any of that uh, you've got some good energy here that's going to help you out. Now Mercury retrogrades in your fifth house and this will get you to review your expenses, it will get you to review your investments, your finances, Definitely, it's a good time to kind of, if there are certain th tasks, admin tasks as well that you need to catch up on, like doing your accounts or, you know, business type stuff as well. This is a really good time to just sit and do some of those admin boring type tasks. Um, let's take a look at your love life. Now love life is going to improve 16th Feb onwards. Okay, you've currently, what well, you're going to have, uh, it's maybe not currently, we're at the 19th of December here, but in the month of January, you're going to have Venus in your sixth house. So there could be some arguments 
uh, you know, happen in love life. So if you're looking for relief or improvement in your love life, 16th Feb onwards, things should be a lot better, a lot smoother. Now on the 21st, 22nd, depending on where you are in the world of January, there is a new moon in Capricorn Uttara Ashada Nakshatra in your sixth house. So here's a question for you, Leo. What does success look like for you? Visualize that and wish for it on the 21st or the 22nd of January. And this doesn't necessarily have to be career, but this is like that, it's like tapping into that feeling of winning. What does winning look like to you? What does it feel like to you? Um, you know, that's, that can be quite a Virgo kind of a thing, the sixth house kind of a thing. And this is your chance on the 21st or 22nd of Jan to wish for whatever it is that makes you feel like you're winning in life. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in, Leo. We are now gonna welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So this is Virgo Ascendant, Virgo Moon or Virgo Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. What do we have going on, Virgo? Well, on the 6th or 7th of January, we've got a full moon in Gemini, Purna Vasu Nakshatra. <clears throat> this is happening in your 10th house. So something might complete at work, okay? Um, something big, maybe a big project might complete at work. Or if you're able to complete something at work, this is a really good time to get it done. I've got the note here, take extra care when communicating, and this is professionally, um, but it's also at home as well. We've got Mercury retrograde on that line, so you definitely want to take care with your speech at this time. And definitely in relationship with mother and things like that as well. Now on the 15th of January onwards, we've got Sun in the fifth house. So your expenses could be rising at this time. Uh, it could be stress at work, could be stress with your children as well, possibly. Mercury is retrograde in your fourth house, and this is gonna get you to review home-related admin or expenses. Okay, so it's a good time. You've got a little bit of time here with Mercury in retrograde to kind of catch up on some admin, get organized. We've really got, I, I do believe, sort of 19th, 18th, 19th January onwards is when we really wanna be on it and organized and feel like we have energy and we're getting into the year, you know. But until then, if you're a bit sluggish and you're a bit, you know, not feeling it or not inspired by the fact that it's 2023, you know, um, don't worry, okay. Mercury's in retrograde, you, you'll have some time to get into that new year feeling. Now, love life is good until, let's have a look here, until 23rd Jan. So Venus in the fifth. Oh, this is beautiful. So the, you've got a really lovely energy here for your creativity, your vitality, that kind of thing. That's good. So Venus is happy here, but until 23rd Jan, she's happy. But then after that, you might notice that your love life is not as smooth or things are a bit more argumentative or snappy with your partner. You know, that can start to happen after the 23rd of Jan. Just take care of that. Like, now you know so you know uh you can kind of um yeah just just sort of chill out on the relationship scene for a, and it'll be for a few weeks a couple of months kind of thing but then the energy will get good again now on the 21st or the 22nd of january there's a new moon in capricorn uttra ashada nakshatra happening in your fifth house beautiful so this is Great time for creative ideas um, and insights to come through. You might be really creative at this time. You might get ideas, you want to jot them down, get downloads, creative downloads, all that kind of thing. It's a great time for creatives, artists, all that kind of thing. It's also a good time to conceive, potentially, if you want to have a baby or any of that. Um, but it's also good to know that that could be a time uh, where you're more fertile and things like that, and just to take extra care. But Virgo, it's looking like a pretty good start to the year. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Libra. Libra, welcome, thank you so much for joining. Now this is Libra Ascendant, Libra Moon, or Libra Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Just checking the time, it's about to cut out. That's okay, we shall crack on. 
Now, apologies Libra, it just cut out, but that's okay. So on the 6th or 7th of January, there's going to be a full moon happening in Gemini, Punarvasu Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your ninth house. So something might be completing, it could be at work, it could even be in relationship with your father as well. Something might be completing there. Also, if you're a student, perhaps something is completing there or maybe to do with your course or your studies, something along these lines, but you're definitely completing something possibly at this time. I've got the note here, be careful with how you speak to either your father or people in authority uh, or friends or siblings as well. We've got Mercury retrograde on that line. So that's something to take care of around the 6th or 7th of January. Now on the 15th of January onwards, we've got Sun moving into your fourth house. So this is not the best month to move location if you're looking to move. Um, it's okay if you are moving, just take extra care, all right? Just know this information and realize, okay, I've got to be, you know, build in buffer time, uh, think a bit extra, take extra care, read the fine print a bit more. You can keep going, keep doing life. Don't worry about the stars, right? So sometimes when, if I, if I was to say something like, yeah, it's not the best time to move, but if you are moving, don't worry, keep moving. But like, just build in buffer time, as I say, read the fine print, all of that. Now, home-related expenses might go up, okay? So that's one of the things of, of sun being in the fourth house and yeah that's one of the reasons why it's not ideal time to move it could be more expensive if you do it's that kind of thing right um, now mercury is going to be in retrograde in your third house this will get you to review any travel plans that you might have it could impact how you communicate as well so just take care with communications um, how you speak to people and this can be sometimes things like, yeah, emails go missing or it's hard to get a, a solid connection on Zoom and things like that. So that, that is a possibility. Love life is looking good for the whole month and into next month as well. You've got Venus in the fourth house, so that's beautiful. All right, and that's Venus in the fourth house. That's also a lovely time to be cozy at home, eat really delicious food, all that kind of thing. Now, on the 21st or 22nd of January, there's a new moon in Capricorn, Uttara Ashada Nakshatra, happening in your fourth house. So, this is an ideal time to wish for your dream home. Where would you love to live? What does that look like? You know, there are these great um, property vlogs online. I watch them, I love them, I love all that stuff. So, definitely do a bit of window shopping. Um, or you could even wish for improvements to your current place or wish for the money to be able to renovate or whatever it is that you like. But Libra, it's looking like a pretty good start to the year for you. Thank you so much for tuning in and we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now this is Scorpio Ascendant, Scorpio Moon or Scorpio Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. What do we have going on, Scorpio? Well, on the 6th or 7th of January, we've got a full moon in Gemini, Puna Vasu Nakshatra. This is happening in your 8th house. So something could complete in regards to your finances. The other thing is we've got a lot of moonlight here. So you might actually be able to see a hidden agenda or get an understanding of some kind of family secret or something like that could be to do with your love life as well if there's something that you know you know there's something going on be not sure and all that so you might you might get an insight into aha that's what's going on so I also have the note here be careful with how you speak to your partner or family members uh, at this time around this full moon as well we've got mercury in retrograde on this line here now on the 15th of January onwards we've got sun in your third house this is beautiful energy. This is great energy to shine at work. You can attract work if you're looking for work. Um, it's a great time to show who you are, what you can do. 
Mercury will be retrograde, that's happening in your second house. So this will get you to review possibly your diet, okay? This could be a really good time, Scorpio. Um, this hasn't come up for anyone else, this is for you because it's in the second house here. This is to do with diet, possibly. So it's a good time to, uh, and of course we've had all the indulgence of the festive season and all that kind of thing. So definitely review your diet at this time uh, if you feel so inspired. You might also want to review your savings plans or your finances, your money. Um, this could be a time to get on with some family related admin or something to do connected with the family. It's some admin that you have to catch up on. This is just a really good time up until like it's about the 18th, 19th of, uh, I think it's the 18th, isn't it? Here in the Southern Hemisphere, I think it's the 19th, but 19th January, Mercury is going to move forward. Um, so you'll want to kind of spend a bit of time at the start of the year getting organized. Now, love life is looking good for the whole month and into the next month. Beautiful. You've got lovely stars for love. Venus is in your third house. That's great. That's a social time. You know, you might feel quite social. You might feel like catching up with friends. This would be a really good month to catch up with friends uh, or hang out with your siblings or any of that. So yeah, now on the 21st or 22nd of January, we've got a new moon happening in Capricorn, Uttara, Ashada Nakshatra in your third house. So this is a really good time to wish for renewed confidence to take on more responsibility in life. That's an interesting thing to wish for. And the reason I'm saying that is because Uttara Ashada, of course, is the lonely nakshatra. It's just about you. So, and we're in the third house here and third house very much represents our confidence, our courage. So you can wish for more, more confidence uh, and definitely to take on more responsibility. We've got Capricorn here as well. And this is the third house is where, you know, we're hands on with life. We want to do it ourselves. So what is it you really want to do yourself, you know? And it's that kind of thing where like, it's that thing that you still want to do, even if millions, like tens of millions were put into your bank account and you could just do nothing all day. No, you would still want to do this thing, right? It's that thing that you have, like it's part of your purpose, your calling, your career, who you are, what you're about. It's got nothing to do with money. It's got everything to do with the confidence to do that thing that's important for you. Wish for that on the 21st or the 22nd of January. So Scorpio, I'm liking the look of the month here for you. You've got some really good energy, especially that sun in the third, that's beautiful. All right, well, thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now gonna welcome Sagittarius. Sagittarius, welcome, thank you so much for joining. So now this is Sagittarius Ascendant, Sagittarius Moon or Sagittarius Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So what do we have going on here? Well, on the 6th or 7th of January, we've got a full moon in Gemini Punarvasu Nakshatra. This is happening in your seventh house. So something could complete in regards to your partner, the person you're married to, or the person you run a business with. Um, this could be to do with your business if you're self-employed. So definitely at this time, be careful how you speak with your partner. If you're in a committed relationship, we've got Mercury in retrograde on this line. So this could be a full moon where you really want to express the fullness of your feelings, but we've got Mercury in retrograde, you know, there could be some misunderstandings here. So just take care. Now on the 15th of January onwards, we've got sun in your second house. So definitely take care of your health. Um, if you feel run down or tired, um, this can also be a position of getting headaches and things like that. If you do get headaches or chronic shoulder ache, neck ache, back pain, any of those things, definitely check out the book. I think it's called Healing Back Pain. I keep telling everyone about it. Healing Back Pain by John E. Sarno. I'm reading it now for the second time. It has helped me so much. And yeah, it's, it's a really great read. So people, what people have found is just by reading the book once, they've healed certain pains forever. And this can be headaches, this can be eczema, it can be uh, irritable bowel syndrome. There's all sorts of things that this covers. So um, it's, it's a pretty incredible read. Uh, I'm recommending it to just about everyone. I've got, already got a couple of friends who are reading it now. But yeah, 
Let's take a look here. Anything that helps people, you know, because I've suffered from all these things all my life, and but they're going away now, and which is so good. And all these uh, books and things. Uh, Dr. David Hawkins has helped me a huge amount as well, as has Louise. Hey, amazing lady. All right, now Mercury's retrograde in your first house. So what does this mean for you? Now Mercury's going to get you to review your plans for the year ahead. What what do you want to do this year? What do you want to achieve? You can look back at last year, but definitely be looking forward. Look forward to this year. What is it that you what is it that you want to do? And definitely try that exercise I mentioned in the intro, which is to write a to-do list for you and write a to-do list for the universe. What do you want the universe to do for you this year? Write that down. And you've got until about the 19th, 18th, 19th Jan to do that. Now, love life is looking good for the whole month and into next month. You've got Venus in the second house. Oh, this is beautiful. This is a great time. Venus in the second house. Cook up something delicious. Treat yourself. Do a little bit of shopping, you know. I know you probably shopped out, uh, but, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe you're like me and you don't have too many people to, to buy gifts for, so maybe you can do a bit of shopping there. All right, now 21st, 22nd January, we've got a new moon happening in Capricorn, Uttara Ashada Nakshatra, in your second house. So it's a really great time to wish for big wealth. If you want the big money, this is the time to wish for that. So uh, you can also wish for something that's going to improve the life of your whole family as well. And that can be, you, you will want to be closer together or, or, or this kind of thing. So definitely a good time to wish for that. Sagittarius, I want to thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Capricorn Ascendant, Capricorn Moon or Capricorn Sun as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. So what do we have going on? Well, on the 6th or 7th of January, we've got a full moon happening in Gemini, Puna Vasunakshatra. This is happening in your sixth house. So something could be completing at work uh, or you know something could be completing in regards to your clients or your client base or something like that could be to do with a legal matter as well legal matter could be completing or winding up at this time um, definitely take care with how you speak with your co-workers uh, or you know those that you serve or those that you work alongside yeah all that kind of thing that's around this full moon. We've got Mercury in retrograde, so just, just take care. Uh, now 15th January onwards, we've got Sun in the first house. Definitely take care of your health. If you're feeling drained, if you're feeling tired, um, th this could be why. So don't, don't worry, th this will change. You'll have better energy. Uh, sometimes we think it's the weather. I know I certainly do. I, I end up thinking, oh gosh, it's the weather. But yeah, it, when I've been observing these transits and this stuff does match with me, uh, yeah, sun in the first house can, can be tiring. So just take it easy and know that you're going to have some very good transits coming up, okay? Now, Mercury retrograde will happen in your 12th house. It's a good time to review plans for the year ahead. Good time to plan a holiday. If you haven't had a holiday for a really long time, plan one think about where can you go if you want a little escape if you want to go somewhere um, it's a good time to plan something like that with mercury retrograde here you know you can review the year you can review well you know i haven't been on holiday type thing so i better plan one in right so definitely think about when you'd like to go and where uh Love life is looking good for the whole month and into next month as well. You've got Venus in the first house. With Venus in the first house, you might be inspired to take up a fitness routine. You might be inspired to work out or do that kind of thing. Definitely do that, Venus. Here. I know you're tired there possibly with the sun there. So if you're feeling tired, you're going to have to listen to that. But equally, Venus is good here in the first. So this could be a time to put in some gentle exercise or something like that just to get the routine going. Um, I've been doing Tibetan exercise, uh, Tibetan yoga. I've been doing that every day and some days when I wake up and I feel a little bit tired I just do fewer repetitions but I do the same routine and it's so good having that structure in there so even though sometimes 
I haven't meditated as much. Like last week I didn't do as much meditation. I was just doing like 10 minutes a day and things like that. But like the exercise, I've kept that going strong now for, I don't know, maybe a few months, like two, three months that has been strong every day. Maybe it's longer than that. Maybe it is a few months. I think it is a few months. I've been strong on that every day. It's been amazing. So I'm normally strong on the meditation, but I drop off the exercise. So I always have one thing that keeps going. So before it was the meditation that was really strong and I wasn't doing any exercise. But now I'm finding that the exercise is really strong and I'm not dropping that. So this could be a time where you, if you've dropped off your exercise routine, you can definitely pick it up uh, definitely in January. Sorry, I just went off on a tangent there. Maybe somebody needs that kind of um, you know, reassurance that, you know, that, that sometimes we do these things, but equally sometimes we drop off and then we pick it up and like this. So it's not always uh, so structured. You are Capricorn after all. Yeah, I see the Saturnians, we need structure. I'm in my Saturn Mahadasha, I need structure, you know. Um, so yeah, I find it helps enormously. It helps a lot. So either exercise or meditation. But at the moment, I, this week has been good. I've been doing both. So, you know. All right, let's take a look. 21st or 22nd January. We've got a new moon in Capricorn, Uttara Ashada Nakshatra. This is happening in your first house. So this is your new moon, Capricorn. You can wish for whatever your heart desires. What is it at this point in your life right now that you really need where you could do with a boost? 21st or 22nd of January, this new moon is the one to really communicate with your higher power. And I've got the note here, recognize that God is unlimited. And that's really important actually, because um, I've been preparing a bit of a list actually of um, things to communicate. There's, there's some stuff I'm doing uh, with my mother. And anyway, anyway, my mom was telling me that when you write your wishes to God, she says, remember, God is unlimited. Because sometimes I think to myself, well, and I think to myself, oh, am I be, being greedy asking for that or something like that? So look at all the internal limitations that we have. You know, I think, oh, I'm being greedy. I shouldn't ask for that or something like that. My mom says, no, it's God. It's the higher power. Ask for, ask your heart's content, you know, ask, ask what you want. And you're a child of God, you know, and um, God is unlimited. And recognize that you, there's something within you that's a little bit unlimited, you know. Uh, and we're connected to that. So there are no limits. So on the 21st, 22nd January, new moon, Capricorn, Uttara, Ashada, Nakshatra, try to feel that unlimited part within you or the no limits or, you know, you're infinite. Try to feel that if you can. So... Wow, big time ahead for you, Capricorn. Uh, I'm wishing you well. Thank you so much for tuning in. And we are now going to welcome Aquarius. Aquarius, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Just taking the time, we're okay. All right, so Aquarius, this is Aquarius Ascendant, Aquarius Moon, or Aquarius Sun, as per the sidereal Vedic system of astrology. Now, on the 6th or 7th of January, we have got a full moon in Gemini Puna Vasunakshatra. This is happening in your fifth house. So something regarding your creativity or your love life or something to do with your children could be coming up for completion. Okay, something could be coming to a natural end here on the 6th or 7th of January. Um, definitely be careful at this time how you speak with lovers uh, and or children. Okay, as Mercury is in retrograde on this line. Now on the 15th January onwards, we have got sun in your 12th house. So if you have trouble sleeping, across this time in January, uh, 15 January onwards, you now know why, okay? And it, it will pass. It won't be there for long. So definitely look out for that. You do have the sun here though, and that is illuminating what's going on here in the 12th house. So some hidden agenda or some secret could become known to you. And this could be in connection with your love life, actually, now that I think about it, because we do have the fifth house is active there. That's quite interesting. So yeah, something could become known to you regarding your love life. Mercury will be in retrograde in your 11th house. So this will get you to review your financial plans 
and your friendship circles or your network circles. Okay, so definitely a good time to review those things. Your love life is looking great for the whole month and into next month as well. Venus is in the 12th. So yeah, love life is lit up uh, for you this time, Aquarius. Some things to consider. So on the one hand, there's some really good energy here as well, but <clears throat> with the hidden stuff being revealed and the completion happening there in the fifth house, this could be a time where, yeah, something, something doesn't make the cut, you know, it's a possibility. Uh, now on the 21st or the 22nd of January, there's a new moon in Capricorn Uttra Ashada Nakshatra in your 12th house. So you might get psychic insights, downloads around this time. Amazing. And that could be to do with secrets and hidden things. Isn't that interesting? I've got the note here, carry a notebook. And if you want to wish for something on this new moon, 21st or 22nd of Jan, you can wish for a stronger spiritual connection so that you are always tapped in and you're always getting the download no matter what's going on. Aquarius, I'm, I'm liking the look of this month for you. It is going to be quite interesting. And we are now going to welcome Pisces. Pisces, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So this is Pisces Ascendant, Pisces Moon or Pisces Sun as per the Sidereal Vedic System of Astrology. So on the 6th or 7th of January, we have a full moon in Gemini, Purnavasu Nakshatra. This is happening for you in your fourth house. So something regarding your home life could complete uh, at this time. It could also be a pattern to do with your relationship with your mother or how you nurture yourself or how you feel nurtured or something along those lines. You might complete some, some cycle uh, this could be a time of some graduation or this could be a really good thing. So something could complete, something could come to an end, you could outgrow something. There's a pattern or a dynamic that you could outgrow, you know, because you're maturing, you're taking more responsibility for your own self, all that kind of thing. I've got the note here, be careful how you speak with mother or family at this time. Uh, Mercury is in retrograde and on that line where the full moon is happening. So just take care in your relationships. <clears throat> All right, we've got on the 15th of January onwards, sun in your 11th house. So this is a great time for work, career, um, gains, expanding your network, all that kind of thing. Mercury will be retrograde in your 10th house. So this will get you to review your career goals and what you want to achieve in the year ahead. Love life is looking great for the whole month and into next month as well. Beautiful. And well, actually, you've entered this long, lovely stretch now. Venus is in the 11th house. So you've got a long, lovely stretch of love life being good. Okay, so if love life has had some bumps in the road over the past few months, that would make perfect sense. But from here on in, it should be a lot smoother. Now, on the 21st or the 22nd of January, new moon, Capricorn, Uttra Ashada Nakshatra happening in your 11th house. So this is a great time to plant seeds for big gains, big wealth, big opportunities. This is a house of hopes, dreams and wishes. You can dream big, wish for what it is that you want, wish for what it is that your heart truly desires. Plant that seed there on the 21st or the 22nd of January and, and let the universe do the rest. I want to thank you so much for tuning in everyone. Thank you so much. We are just about, gosh, it's the 19th of December. This is not the last video of the year. I'm going to do another one. I am going to do, um, this, I was supposed to do Mercury retrograde as a breakout video. I forgot to mention this at the start of the video. I always do that. I always, you know, save these admin type things to the end, but I was going to do Mercury retrograde as a breakout video. I end up doing it in the January outlook. What I think I'll do as a breakout video now is an astro chat possibly on the whole, the recent royal thing that's been going on because as I was saying, because I have been checking out the charts of like Prince Harry and Meghan Markle and I've been like watching what all the commentators have been saying. So I have been checking all that out. And I think what I might do, 
I don't know, I'll see how I go for time because I, I do actually have a lot of readings on at the moment. But if I have time, I might do a little breakout video, an astro chat or something about the royal situation. Let's see how I go for time. So this is not the final video of the year. But anyway, I want to thank all those of you who watch these videos and any Pisces people who are still here or any of those of you who've watched the whole thing, thank you with all my heart for being here and for making this community so wonderful. We've got such an amazing group here. We've got such amazing people in the comments below. I love seeing the comments, you guys support each other. And I love as well that people really express how they feel here, that you feel safe enough to do that is just so wonderful. So I don't always have time to write back to everyone, but I do read the comments and, and I wanna thank everyone for being here. So thanks so much and I look forward to seeing you next time.